Welcome home, Raiders. Tonight! Uh, surprises this week in esports? Not, not, not really. <laughs> uh, although there were some tonight, and I'll try to get to that in just a second. As Convert to Raid presents Battle.net Sports. Welcome back to Battle.net Sports, everybody. Now, my name is Pat Crane. I'm your host. And this week, we will be talking to Thist about Overwatch League and uh, AWC as well. That's WoW Arena for you folks out there. Also, uh, Josh joins us to talk a little bit about HCT, the APAC playoffs for this last weekend. Plus, of course, DreamHack Paris was going on. And we'll uh, we'll uh, catch up with her because uh, she started her new, her new gig over there. And so we'll kind of figure out what's going on there. Um, as far as some other things, I'm just going to let you know about a couple of a couple of big things kind of on the radar right now. Uh, and this has to do with StarCraft 2. Now, WCS Austin, and I'm basically going to be uh, I'm selecting WCS is kind of like the main push for all of the StarCraft 2 stuff because that is what we're going to see at BlizzCon 2018. So that's why I'm doing this right now. Uh, but WCS Austin, this is the first uh, stop in North America for the for the 2018 WCS Circuit Series. Uh, and of course, this is going to be a DreamHack June 1st through the 3rd. There's $20,000 in prize money and uh, the tournament champion gets to go to BlizzCon. Okay? So there's that one that's on the radar. The other thing that's on the radar is that we are in Season 2 uh, of Code S. I don't know what the S stands for. Uh, but it's Code S Season 2 of GSL. This is Global StarCraft League. Uh, and all three of these seasons that we're going to see from GSL uh, not only results in a champion going to BlizzCon, but there's also $150,000 in in, uh, in the prize pool. And this is all over in Korea, and it's a very, very big thing over there. It really is. And right now we are in the round of 16, uh, GSL Season 2, and I will be uh, keeping you in the loop on that stuff. As far as the timeline goes for that, it, the the way that it's laid out is that Throughout June, we will be going uh, further and further in, and then the grand, fina grand finale will be toward the end of June. Uh, so coming up, we will know who is going to go uh, to BlizzCon for, for Season 2. So there you go. Um, now, let's move forward. But before we actually move forward, I'm going to move uh, ahead to today. Today is Wednesday. And Wednesday night is the beginning of the Overwatch League week, really. And we saw something interesting. Uh, the Fuel, who doesn't normally win a lot of stuff, actually beat Boston. I can't explain it. I'm not going to explain it. All I'm going to say is that that happened well after I talked to Thist, which is going to happen right now. Well, we are uh, post week one of stage four, so now we're now we're fully into stage four. Uh, we no longer have to wait and see how the uh, how the top of the league is forming or the bottom of the league. Although it is kind of surprising right now. And so to join me is uh, Thist from Lagging Balls and and uh, Battle.net News. You come on there sometimes, and then uh, uh, DBLTap.com. So welcome, Thist. And, Thank you. Uh, so this last week was kind of interesting for Overwatch League. Oh, yes. Uh, um, everything that we kind of thought would happen kind of didn't. And <laughs> <laughs> right. In a great way. And uh, it's interesting like, with the new map pool and with the new uh, meta, uh -huh. a lot of teams that were sort of mid-ground are starting to uh, excel 
and that's exciting to see. And it's also very interesting to see some teams that are traditionally better than others not being so great anymore. Well, and, and like there are five teams that are zero and two. They're in the basement after this first week, and it's kind of surprising. I mean, we have like Mayhem and the Dragons, which we kind of understand of are, course, yeah. are there. Uh, then we also have the Uprising, which. I mean, they came close to winning stage three, and now they're just kind of on a losing uh, little route here. So we'll we'll just yeah. see what's going on. And then also on top of that, Dynasty and Spitfire, bottom of the basement. Yep, they are in the basement. What's going on? I don't. I don't know. I I, I mean, I know there's an inj- injury on uh, Dynasty. London's having some roster issues, uh, but Uprising like. Their 14 match regular season win streak was ended by the Fusion. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Fusion is a good team. I mean, they're, I know, but they're 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 a they're an upstanding team, and actually, uh, right now they are two and zero. Oh, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I didn't see that coming. I th- I figured I figured uprising. You know, like they they were amazing last stage. They were absolutely incredible, and you know they they did lose. Uh, the most crucial match, but you know, mm-hmm. like it was a it was well fought and stuff. So I figured, you know, okay, they took a week off to figure out what went wrong, and they're going to come back better than ever, and they're going to like win the whole season, and it's going to be amazing. But nah, they just kind of <laughs> lost. Nah, <laughs> nah, 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 we're nah. good. Actually, we had right. fun last time. It's too much work. We're good now. It's fine. Right, right, and it, and it's kind of it's so at the top we have the outlaws, gladiators, fusion. Excelsior and Valiant. I don't think there are any real surprises there, um, yeah. other than the Outlaws uh, going two and zero, which I kind of was was like, okay, that's at least notable for now. Um, one of the one of the interesting things was that the Shock, the Fuel, are now one and one, so they're kind of in the middle. That's not really a shock either, but the Shock beat <laughs> uh, who did they beat? They beat the Uprising, right? Yeah. So that's weird to me. It is weird. And Dallas only won because they only win against China. That's it. They don't win against anyone else. And it's so, it's so, it's so bad. Like Shanghai is now zero and 32. I know it's 32. It's, yeah. Something's got to happen over there. Something's so got to happen. The, uh, the, uh, the team's manager van apologized on Twitter for the team's recent losses and kind of gave a glimpse into the like the training uh, regimen that this team has. So their daily schedule starts at 10.30 a.m. and okay. they come back to their house around 11 o'clock at night with possible training extensions to midnight. And they train six days a week with one day off. And during mid-stages, they have three to four days off depending on other teams' schedule if they have scrims with other teams. Uh-huh. So, I mean, they say like that's like the, the most intensive... Uh, like training schedule of any team in the league, as far as we know, but like, like maybe, maybe they should just get some time off. Like maybe right. they, they should be able to chill out a little bit more. Like maybe the opposite of that would help. I, I mean, obviously I don't know, but well, and it, just it, right. And I don't know what the other teams are doing. I mean, I'm guessing that there are a variety of, of uh, styles as far as coaching goes. And, and um, I don't know. It, it does seem a little intense. It does. I mean, but, you know, when you haven't won a single game, like, what can you do? But at the same time, like, with this new meta, with Dive being almost completely dead, um, we're seeing a lot of Zarya play. And that's where Gaguri, like, she's an amazing diva, of course. She's an incredible diva, but Gaguri is her main, and watching her play Zarya in the Overwatch League, like, I was, like, I was so sure that they were going to beat Dallas last week. I was positive that they were going to. But then Mickey comes out with Brigitte and completely slays. Oh, my God. Yeah. And we, and we should we should actually talk about that because now we have Brigitte in play uh, and and we are starting to see uh, the, the pattern emerge about who's playing Brigitte, what she's being used as. And basically, it's an anti-dive comp. Uh, it's part of an anti-dive, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, and, and Mickey was playing Brigitte, I think like 70% of the time or somewhere around there. I think so. And he yeah. was the only one from the whole team that was playing, was playing it. And, oh. and the most in the league. It was the most yeah. in the league. 
So, uh, so how was Mickey on Brigitte? Oh, he was fantastic. He's like, he's, he's a solid player. He's my favorite player, um, on the Dallas fuel right now. And it was interesting to see, like, I, it's funny because like Brigitte is a technically a support hero and yeah. Mickey plays tank and well, yeah. And, uh, it's, it was interesting to see like which, uh, players in the overwatch league would use Brigitte. Um, and most of them weren't support players. They were flex. So it's right. I, it, like, it's, it's kind of cool. So on overwatch league.com, if you go there, there is actually an article that kind of lays all this stuff out. Now, not only does it um, talk about who played what, what teams played Brigitte more uh, and all that kind of stuff, but also where Brigitte came from. And you're right. Uh, flex and DPS made up 95% of the players that were playing Brigitte. So it's not that Brigitte was being played as a support. She was being played as a flex or yeah, whatever, as, or as an anti dive that came from DPS players. So, so I mean, yeah. it's, you have this super aggressive play coming from Brigitte and, you know, kind of offsetting the Zenyatta weaknesses and yep. stuff like that and being able to play close and, yeah, it's just it's it's wild to to see this new thing come in, and at the same time, you're seeing um, you're seeing these dive uh, characters not being played as much, like yep. Diva, uh, Winston, Tracer. Goodbye, Winston. And so yeah, and it's it's cool because like not since uh, Mercy got mega nerfed for like the third time or something. Um, <laughs> did we see like a, like a, ma a major shakeup like this? And it was interesting because like the first couple of uh, stages in Overwatch League, it was mercy, mercy, mercy. If you don't have a mercy, you're dead. And then right. all of a sudden it was, okay, uh, different teams are now excelling because they can use Ana instead and not mercy. Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, dive is dead. And now we're seeing uh, Reinhardt and Brigitte Z and, and Zarya. Zarya. Yeah. yeah. And it's, 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 it's cool that like this, uh, this, the league and these sports and this these matches like are affected directly by like what's happening in the game, and it's it's cool because like as players like we get to experience it first, and then it comes to Overwatch League and we get to see how the pros handle meta changes and nerfs and buffs and and just everything that we're experiencing as normal players like it actually like it matters more than anything to them because it completely changes like who's going to play, who's going to start, who's getting benched and like who's got to switch off tank when they normally play tank and go on to a support that actually is more like a DPS. Like it's, it's so cool. Cause like overwatch league just, you know, with the exception of the three bottom teams just changes all of the time for like all of these different reasons. And I think that's why it's one of the most interesting esports today because it just, you can never really tell what's going to happen. Yeah, and and it, it also is the first uh, season of this league, and so we're st we're not only seeing changes within the game, but we're seeing uh, changes within just kind of how the league performs. And and nothing is, while it seems like everything has kind of been set in stone as far as the schedule goes, even that has changed a little bit, uh, grown a little bit over the over the course of the season. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, now we also had. Uh, on top of the Brigitte uh, edition, uh, we had some changes coming from the Spitfire, mm. um, yes. which was, which is a little weird. I mean, as far as their roster is goes, right? Yeah. So yesterday, um, Spitfire announced that. Uh, excuse, I still don't know how to pronounce most of these names, but Hagopun, <laughs> uh, TZ, uh, Wu Yal, and Hureg are. Uh, what did they say? Like, they're effectively they're benched. They're, they're I was trying. I was trying to be more polite than saying they're benched, but they got benched, and they got benched because uh, the they had a roster of eleven players, and they said it was too large to concentrate on, yep. and they want a smaller roster so that would be easier to work with and perfect, and they want like a smaller core starting roster. So these four like perfectly good players who did nothing wrong are now benched until the end of their contracts with Spitfire or a mutual release is negotiated. So yeah. like well, if they, if they don't like find some other team to play for before this 
the stage is over. Like they don't get to play until the next season. The, the the good news is they're still getting paid. They're still they're still on the team technically. I guess. Um, and I mean because they <laughs> they can't change it, right? Um, but it is. I guess it's understandable for me, just looking at from a team perspective. The London Spitfire have not been doing amazing the last stage or so, and so maybe now they have to concentrate on on you know bringing up some of their some of their key players and making sure that they gel because guess what something isn't working right now for those guys. Yeah. So yeah, it it does make total sense. It's not yeah. an unreasonable or outrageous reason or anything like that, but it really is too bad because you know you want to see players getting benched for like not being effective or not playing well or etc but like it's literally just they overcompensated with their roster and they're realizing their mistake way too late in the stage in my opinion so um but right. yeah i mean i i hope this helps and i hope that the four players you know find another team uh maybe a team that needs some really good players like maybe. china <laughs> maybe. maybe i don't know maybe well, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, what's coming up this week, and actually, it's the 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 fun is going to start here momentarily. Yeah, a few hours from now. Really? Uh, so, what what uh, matchups are you looking forward to this week? Is there anything that stands out in your mind? Oh uh, yeah. What do you got? Uh, I'm definitely excited for Houston versus the Gladiators. I tonight. I, yeah, tonight. I love both teams so much, and they're just. Those two teams in particular, like when I think about Overwatch League, uh, those two teams pop up for me first, just because the players are so, you know, happy and positive and I don't know, they they really represent the the spirit of the league for me, I guess. And both sure. teams are, um, as far as I'm concerned, like fairly neck and neck with uh, how they're doing right now. Like they're both they're both moving up. They're both mm -hmm. uh, tackling this new meta very well. Um, this map pool is very uh, beneficial to both of them, and they have like extremely uh, an extremely diverse roster that is makes it able for them to like play pretty much whatever comp they want. Right. So it's it's really going to be interesting to see these two go head to head. And like honestly, I don't know who's going to come out on top. Like there's literally just I have no idea. And, I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna pick Houston only because. Okay, That's... I'll pick Gladiators then. Because <laughs> you're cause wearing a jersey right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. The the <laughs> one of the one of the games that I'm looking forward to tomorrow night on the on the 24th is London versus San Francisco, and Ooh. it's not because it's because it seems like London is trying to rework some stuff, and San Francisco is actually in the last part of stage three. Actually, in a lot of stage three, they they were doing really really well. And yeah. so I think that this could be a, a good matchup between these between these two clubs, and I guess we'll we'll uh, find out exactly what's going on. But that one does seem like a good one for Thursday, anyway. Yeah, and I'm more excited about the uh, London game on Saturday when they go up against Seoul Dynasty because who's who's going to win that? Literally, have no idea. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see who's like who's handling this meta better. Sure. Sure, and I and I do hope that I do hope that uh, teams like Boston start uh, playing like they were back in stage three, and and you know, and I really do hope that Seoul Dynasty finds some sort of spark in all of this, and it just seems like their 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 dynamic is just kind of fading, and I don't know exactly why that is, um, but I don't know, but they've got they've got a a a tough game with New York coming up. Oh yeah, that they're not, not going to winning that. That's no. not going to help <laughs> stuff at all. So, nope. so that's not uh, that's not pretty good, and it's not looking good for like the dragons. I don't think they're going to win this week. They're no. up against Philly and uh, the XL. So yeah, it's not going to happen. That's gonna and I hate tough. knowing that. I hate I know. knowing that. I hate being I sure about that. I know, but I know you never know. Maybe Gagori will. And I'm I'm putting a lot of pressure on Gagori, but it's just that <laughs> since Zarya is viable right now and i've just sure. seen what she can do and i and i know that she can and I, maybe she'll pull it out and maybe maybe something will happen this week but sure. do you have a wild pick as far as like if if all things worked out this is the one like upset pick that i would pick for this week you know um, or is it or do you think it's all going to play out kind of like how it looks on paper yeah i think i think it's going to be a quiet week okay all right yeah. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Boston beats the Valiant. That's that's the only 
upset okay. pick that I would have. I so. will hope for that too. Go Boston. <laughs> so, so there. Uh, so uh, let's maybe switch it up a little bit and let's talk about some World of Warcraft Arena. Okay. Some AWC because this last weekend was also the Summer NA Cup number one. So uh, Cup number one for summer mm -hmm. in the NA. The week before that, we had EU. Next week, we we go back to uh, the EU for Cup number two. Yes, that's on Saturday, May 26th at 9 a.m. PDT. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now let's talk about about what actually happened <laughs> in the NA Cup number one. It was a little. Sure. It was a little boring. I, I mean, mean it wasn't boring. It was. It was just a little. <laughs> it was just a little samey. It was all b a bunch of three and O's, three and ones, and it wasn't super exciting until the end. <laughs> oh yeah, the end. And then oh, it was my awesome. It really was. Uh, the final map. It came down to. Uh, the move versus method orange. Yeah, and uh, I, th the move had been like if 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 this weekend was quote unquote boring, the move was not. They no. were undefeated. They didn't lose a single map in that series. And when it came down to method orange, it you know people people were looking at Sidu and they were looking at Absurge and they're like, nah, method's got this. Like, there's no way that they can. They can lose, but uh, it came down to a tie, and so they had to do uh, a final map, and it came down to Blades Edge Arena, which I love because you know it's pretty metal looking. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they uh, they kind of ganged up on Sidu and took him out. Yeah, no, it and was it was it was good stuff. They even had they even had one match that was a double a limb, so they they where they both uh, eliminated the healer essentially mm -hmm. within seconds of each other. Yeah. And and then it, then it was like, oh my gosh, this is a fight f to see who can outlast the other one. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen there. Yeah, it really just came down to the rest of shamans. Like that's all yep. it was, pretty much. And yep. the the last map, like the last match, it was over in a few seconds. Like it it really didn't take that long, and nobody saw that coming. And uh, <laughs> like the move, they said the move is the most improved team in the tournament because they really just they they, they came in. And they didn't let anybody beat them. And then they took out Method Orange at the very end. And it was amazing to see. It was... Right. Right. And, I didn't expect that. <laughs> and so we also had uh, some other notables were Casca's Angels and Super Frogs and, and... Super Rejects. Super Rejects. Those guys as well. Yep. Uh, so, you know, it was all very... It was it was, it was was a good showing. It was, it was uh, nice. It, was, it just wasn't super compelling slash exciting it was no, it, it seemed like a kind of uh it, it was kind of like hey we're having fun this weekend which is always nice but uh nothing super exciting until the end and then and then it just went and exploded everything so oh yeah 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 it was crazy. yeah it was it was just your typical na uh awc weekend all the <laughs> na teams did what they do right. and it was it was i mean that's not to say that the gameplay wasn't excited to watch was no. it was it was incredible sure. um it was amazing and really enjoyable but i'm just you know, talking overall like the yeah. matches and stuff like that it seemed to be like if it went a certain team's way that's the way it was just gonna go and you could have some incredible plays don't get me wrong and there were uh but it just seemed like i don't know you watch the match and oh somebody won a game okay they're probably gonna <laughs> win the match <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so, i mean i guess so, i just so. it's um AWC has been really cool yeah. this season, and uh, I don't know. It's uh, I would agree. That's uh, yeah, that's all you can really say about it. I guess right. it's just um, right. Although you know, I think uh, after watching the 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 cup number one EU side, EU is going to crush them. Just crush all NA. I think you're right. I, mean, I didn't want to say that, anything. They do that consistently anyway. But yeah. <laughs> it's not a bold prediction by any means. No, not really. Uh, but we do go to do, go to, into uh, EU Cup number two this weekend, and mm -hmm. where I'm kind of expecting probably a few teams to to really fight for that uh, for, fight for the win this weekend. Oh so, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty ferocious with the EU, and I don't know. It's I don't want to sound like I don't like EU because I do, of course, because I'm, you know, I'm EU and I mean, kind of, I not, mean, as a, really. as, a, as a Canadian, it's like, 
as a Canadian, I'm kind of you're, you, you're both. But I'm also an A, so it's just like I'm just I'm just appreciating everything here. It's All right. fine. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, any any uh, other things that you wanted to talk about today? Yeah. So yeah. the new Allied races were prohibited for use in the NA Cup. Why do you think that is? Because of the racials. Oh. Yeah. They yeah, didn't that wanna, makes sense. They didn't want to throw any. They don't want to deal with that. They don't want to deal with that new stuff. Nah. I think just, that's kind of cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of cool. But they, but they probably just didn't want to throw teams off or anything like that. And so they're so it might even be banned for the rest of the year. Oh, yeah. I would oh, think. Oh, yeah. I would think. Because like when BFA comes out, there's going to be a lot of new stuff that right. we're going to have to deal with and learn about. Oh, right. oh, Pat, I'm excited about that. That's going to change everything. Unless it's for unless it's for the unless it's for the fall season and beyond, then then it's yeah. maybe maybe they'll have it by that. I don't know. I don't know. We shall see. But uh, we will catch up with what happened uh, this weekend. Next week. That makes sense. That does make sense. Like a especially to thing. like Chromie. That makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we talked really great about what happened next this weekend. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. It was... <laughs> now I'm confused. Yeah, everybody is. Uh, but this, thank you very much. And again, you can catch this on Lagging Balls, uh, uh, Battle.net News, and at dbltap.com. Uh, thanks for your insight and your help. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit of Hearthstone, HCT, and uh, DreamHack stuff. And, of course, we have Jocelyn Moffat returning uh, to us from, uh, from well, from DreamHack, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't actually at DreamHack, but I was definitely on the France schedule. <laughs> you, were, you were in it. You were in it. Yes. You were in it deep. So, uh, now, because this is your the first time working with DreamHack, like... Like in the staff of DreamHack, how was it? What did you do? What were what were all the things? I'm just, I'm so curious about what what you were doing. Uh, well, so I'm a Hearthstone content creator. So basically, what that means is that I watch the Hearthstone tournament intensely and then make sure that I am pushing out to social media when all the super cool things happen. So uh, that meant 4 a.m. wake ups and and diving right into the tournament. <laughs> but uh, it was it was really really fun though. I like. I mean, I've I've watched a whole bunch of Hearthstone dream hacks, obviously, but uh, to actually be involved, it was it was crazy to see. It's just like everyone is just like running around constantly busy. And, and there's so many balls in the air with all the different events that they have at tours or at yeah. dream hacks. So, right. uh, yeah, it was it was a crazy weekend, well, but it was really, really fun. And, and not only that, I bet it was pretty intense because you're also looking at this stuff with a fairly critical eye and trying to really make sure that what you are sending out to people is going to be the best stuff and be like really cool moves or awesome mm -hmm. plays or whatever. So, I mean, it's it's got to well, be. I mean, like it was also my first ever event like this. It was sure. it was kind of like it was just stressful in general because I was like, oh, my God, what if I call this a fatigue warrior? But it's actually, a oh. I don't know, control <laughs> warrior. And like <laughs> I, was, like ever, I read every single tweet, like probably 800 times before I pressed well, the OK button. <laughs> you survived. And congratulations Did? on that stuff. Uh, how was the action at DreamHack as far as uh, the Hearthstone stuff goes? It was, um, let's just say it's ready for nerfs. <laughs> we'll put oh, it that way. Because oh, uh, we had quite a lot of people who brought a very, very similar lineup. So we had uh, okay. 221 out of, I think, 230 people actually brought Paladin. And every single one of those Paladin decks was even Paladin. So there wasn't even any mm. sort of like anything that was different. It was just, yeah, it was, it was kind of. There were a lot of similar games. Oh, sorry. No, uh, sorry. DreamHack did have a couple of Murloc Paladins. It was uh, the APAC playoffs that had every single Paladin was even Paladin. So even Paladin was, uh, we just had our nerfs roll out yesterday. And so there, uh, there was, you know, like even Paladin was really, really dominating. Obviously, Warlock. Warlock has been dominating pretty much since... Um, well, pretty much since Gul'dan came out, so Frozen Throne back last summer. So right. I think it just, uh, we're getting to the point now where it was time for some nerfs. It was time for some shakeups and some changes. So 
Um, one really interesting thing, though, that did come out of DreamHack was the winner, Maverick, actually had a Fatigue Warrior in his lineup. So he won the whole tournament. And I think Fatigue Warrior even reverse swept three in a row at one wow. point. So, yeah, it was it was interesting to see decks like that. Um, also, because DreamHack was last hero standing, we had uh, some people bringing even Shaman to counteract the Paladin. So in last hero standing, once you lose with a deck, it's out. So basically, people brought shaman not to actually you know try to win three in a row with it but just in case their opponent won with paladin they had a counter and i think it had a 75 percent win rate against tempo mage and close to i think almost a 70 percent win rate against um against paladin so it wow. absolutely did its job and it was interesting to see people actually playing a deck like that because of the last hero standing format Right. So, uh, so who are the big? So we had Maverick, the that one dream hack. Uh, yep. Who are the other standouts that we had from there? Uh, so we had uh, Maverick came first, obviously. Then we had uh, he defeated Scruffy, so Scruffy came second, and then uh, tied for third and fourth were Savat and X Blizes, and uh, they they had some. There were some really really good plays and some really good players. And actually, we had nine rounds of Swiss at Dream Hack, so. There were a couple of players who actually, they took a top 16, but mm -hmm. because of the way the Swiss actually worked out, we didn't have anyone go undefeated, which meant that not all of the 7-2 and two players made it through. So we had both Tyler and Orange, who were very well-known Hearthstone players, both went 7-2, and two, but their tiebreakers weren't good enough to get them into the top 16. So Ouch. that was, uh, it was, it was a little unfortunate. Yeah, I think Orange went 0-2 um, oh and, and then won seven rounds straight after that. So okay. I guess his uh, the people he lost to right at the beginning didn't end up with that great of a record overall. So it was right. a little bit too bad for them because, uh, yeah, they were they were both very, very excited on Twitter right before, uh, <laughs> like right after they went seven and two, they were like, yeah, top 16. And then it was like, oh, wait, and they went, actually, oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. So Spoke too soon. Yeah, oh, but no. still, seven and two in nine rounds of Swiss is nothing to scoff at. So no. I mean, they both did very, very well. So um, yeah, those were kind of our our closest to top sixteen, like really big names. Although Maverick Mavericks had some really good results lately as well. Uh, he also competed at uh, DreamHack Toronto. I think he came twenty fourth. So wow. um, he's he I think is one to watch. He competed um, in BlizzCon twenty fifteen as well. So I think he's he's definitely been around for a while, and he's he's a fairly well known name. Yep. Uh, now let's switch it over to APAC because this was the last of the playoffs, right? For for uh, HCT, and so because now we have all the nerfs, which we'll get to in just a second. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> let's talk APAC. And you said, again, it was kind of um, same, same decks. Homogenized. Yeah, yes. very samey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but who are, some of, who are some of the players and were there any uh, standouts? Uh, well, we had, I believe, Surrender just barely missed out on going through to the top eight. Our winners that are going on to the Summer Championship are Glory, Blood Trail, Jinsu, and Tensoku, who are names I am not familiar with at all. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but again, like you said, it was a very homogenized tournament. Everyone who brought Paladin, which was 68 out of 71 players, brought Paladin. And every single one, like I mentioned uh. earlier, was even Paladin. So again, <laughs> quite homogenized. Um, although... We didn't see any Taunt Druid, Murloc Paladin, Zulok, and Token Druid. They all just had completely disappeared wow. from the America's Championship that we had um, last weekend up until APAC this weekend. They right. just dropped completely off the map. So uh, we also, like I mentioned, very homogenized. Druid, Priest, and Paladin all only had one archetype. So the Druid was the Spiteful Ugh. Druid, the Priest was the mind, mind Blast Priest, and then the Paladin was even Paladin. So any time that we're getting to the point where... Some classes like Hunter, Warrior, and Shaman really aren't that very well represented. And the ones that are represented only have one archetype. It's a pretty stale meta. So yeah. um, really, yeah. it was just Warlock was the one that had um, like multiple archetypes. And even then, it was Q-Block and Control Warlock, which are archetypes we've had around forever. So Right. Well, maybe we should talk about these nerfs because uh, there's some hope that these nerfs will at least kind of, I don't know stave off some of the issues that we're having with with this staleness and mm -hmm. i i think that that when you take a look at the i mean there are six cards that are nerfed we have uh uh spiteful summoner right and yep. we have a couple of different warlock cards and we have uh the naga sea witch right 
Is that the one? Yeah, Nagasi, which is um, exclusive to Wild, but yeah, the okay. Nagasi, which is one of the ones that got nerfed. But yeah, so Spiteful Summoner went up in one mana in cost, which I don't really think is going to impact the Spiteful Druid too much. I've still run up against some Spiteful Druids on ladder today, and they, well, the deck doesn't really change that much. And that's much. because <laughs> they, they have that mana play, so it's yeah. like, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters more for Spiteful Priest than anything else. Right. Absolutely, because uh, the way the priest curve used to work, you could get your two summoners out and then you could go into your uh, free from amber spells on eight. Right? right. So now you're only getting the one spiteful out and your curves a little bit messed up. And spiteful priest was kind of falling off anyways. Uh, spiteful druid was the way to go. And the problem with um, spiteful summoner in druid is that the pool doesn't actually change. Right. The, the 10 drops available to spiteful druid are all very powerful so especially when you kind of high roll and get Tyrantus, which can't be targeted by spells, then yeah, that's you know it yeah. just it, it gets a little bit snowbally. So one, that one that one hurts quite a bit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, but in terms of Warlock, we had uh, the healing on Dark Pact was reduced, and uh, the lackey that the possessed lackey that pulls the demons out of your deck was increased in cost by one. So I think what we're going to see um, possibly in tournament, definitely on ladder is uh, kind of a move back towards aggro because those two changes are going to slow down both cube and control warlock a little bit and they're not going to be able to heal as much so i think that we're probably going to see uh, more aggressive decks kind of take over which i think is kind of good because some of the games especially when you would get like control warlock against like fatigue warrior it was just like we're talking like 45 minute hearthstone oh. games Oh. So uh, I think it'll be nice to see a little bit of a shake up there. And we're going to see, I think, a little bit more aggression in the tournament meta. So probably uh, even Shaman seems well positioned now. I mentioned that before it was targeting Paladin. Now mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be good, <laughs> period, okay. without actually right. needing a specific target. Um, also, I think we're going to see a lot more Hunter. We're seeing people move away specifically from the face hunter variant and just into like a secret hunter kind of a build. Okay. Uh, and then obviously uh, mage mage is going to be it. anything that's aggressive and burn is, is going to do well as well. So it's kind of like all the aggro decks that kind of got bullied out by Paladin because Paladin was just so strong. Now I think we're just going to see more variety in the aggressive play style. Well, that that'll be at least fun to more fun to watch. I think just in general. I think so. so. I good. hope Zulok comes back, to be honest. I, I like Zulok. I like the way that the deck plays. And if yeah. we're going to see any Warlock at all, I prefer to watch a Zulok play because they're, they're, it's a lot more complicated, I think, than people give it credit for when it comes to, you know, what trades you make, when it's time to actually go face. And, you know, even positioning comes into play a lot in Zulok, which some of the other decks can just ignore completely. So right. I, I like watching Zulok play. So I, I hope that we see more of that. Um, in the in uh, Dreamhack Austin in a couple right. weeks. Well, and and I was just gonna say, Dreamhack Austin is June first through the third. That is the next tournament, um, and we don't really know what to expect here, do we? It's Not really. It's always hard to tell. I mean, the nurse went live yesterday, so yeah. we really don't know what's going to be good and what isn't going to be good. Sure. Um, I've been playing a quest priest, which is really really fun, but I don't really know if it's like tournament viable, but um, yeah, I think Priest is going to be really strong, uh, and like I mentioned, Shaman Hunter, and any kind of aggressive deck in general, which is why I think the priest, the Quest Priest specifically, you might see some play, just because it's um, there's a lot of healing in that deck, not to mention with some of the new tools that we got with Witchwood, which I think these nerfs are going to let the Witchwood cards actually shine a little bit more, so we got a couple of cards in Witchwood that are actually going to allow the Priest to kind of use that healing back to 40 or setting your health to 40 probably more than once in a game. So um, I think the Quest Priest is going to be quite good against uh, these aggro variants that I expect to show up. So cool. it's going to come down to uh, what people are trying to target if they think that aggressive lineups are going to be more prevalent or if they think control lineups are going to be more prevalent or if they're going to go with just kind of the best available decks, which again... We're still not even sure what those best available highest win rate decks are going to be. So right. Right. Uh, everything's kind of up in the air. But I'm hoping uh, that by next week we should have a better idea because I think the um, 
Deckless deadline for DreamHack Austin is actually next Tuesday, so okay. we should uh, we should have a good idea next week going in uh, what exactly people think the meta is going to look like. All right, well, sounds good, and make sure to rest up because uh, you're going to be busy come uh, <laughs> come June first through the third. <laughs> At least it's in the right time zone this time, <laughs> and I don't have to pretend that I am in France. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, Jocelyn Moffat, thank you so much for your insight, and we will talk to you next time. And that is going to do it here at Battle.net Sports. I want to thank Jocelyn and uh, and Fist as well for joining me and, and sharing their knowledge and their passion for these wonderful esports that uh, that we all enjoy so much, all, all the Blizzard game esports. Also, a big shout out to Alessander, because without Alessander, uh, the StarCraft II experience probably would not be here <laughs> on Battle.net Sports. But I, I see the error of my ways. So, so, so thank you very much. And uh, a big thanks to all of you guys. And if you want to find out more about what we do, please go over to ConvertToRaid.com. That's where we have uh, not only all of our uh, all of our audio and our video, but our our guild stuff for the WoW side of things. Uh, and the Convert to Raid podcast network, which features uh, shows from the regular players that join us, not only at Battle.net Sports, but also at our sister show, Battle.net News. Uh, so please go over to ConvertToRaid.com, check it all out, and uh, and tell us what you think. You can always uh, talk to us at ConvertToRaid on Twitter. So uh, thank you very much for dropping by. Really, really do appreciate you guys um, uh, picking up the show every week. So thank you very much for that. And we will see you next time. For all the guys here at ConvertToRaid, Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.